So welcome to Bunny's Designs. This is a live show Thursday. It's recorded for Ustream.tv and also for YouTube for people to watch at their leisure. Um, I'm working the Colin Thompson colouring book and this book's got a bit neglected. Um, I started lots of pages and not finished them so um, I thought I'd have... I love the book pages, my favourite pages. So um, I'd left a little note to say that I'd started this in Derwent watercolour pencil. But the way I use the pencils is I use them from my little book of watercolours. So that means I can take this with me and leave the pencils at home. But I've got more control because of a paper palette. Now you don't have to make squares and, and number them like this. You can just scribble a little bit. You can use photocopy paper as long as, because we're not using a lot of water, we want a barely damp brush. So we dunk the brush in the water and then twist it to a point and the water's gone off into the baby wipe. It's a damp baby wipe. But this has left this barely damp. But that enables you to work even on a Bible page because it's very, very, um, it's just barely damp and so it's quite forgiving. But the idea is that you kind of just get your colour on and stroke once, then you don't touch it again. Because it's when you go back over it and you start rubbing, most papers don't like that. So this particular method with these uh, riggers, now I do use riggers, these are not, quite the same as riggers. One's a half rigger um, and I have um, a, a Dale Rowney Graduate 10 Zero and I love this brush because it's the it's the finest one so you can get some really tiny details in there. I then have the Pearl Art Master and these are about £2.50. They're Series 55. Now they look and act like a rigger but if you look at the Dale Rowney rigger, it's not as long. The tip is not as long. Because the barrel's the same, but that one's a bigger one, longer. So if you can't manage the tall riggers, and they do kind of wiggle all over the place, you've got to have a bit of a practice with them. But these are fantastic for using on paper rather than watercolour paper, because what these were designed for they were designed to do long strokes and that's why they're called riggers because they were used for painting rigger, rigging on a ship. So all those long um, ropes that you see on an old fashioned sailing ship, they were you, done with a rigger. And I like them, this is why this particular way of working, I designed it, um, I invented it for water colouring on a paper, on ordinary paper, even on a Bible page. And it's designed that you can just, <clears throat> excuse me, carry on and this barrel will slowly release a damp, a dampness. Because this is just damp water. And it will slowly release it. Now when you have a, a water brush, a watercolour brush, this isn't, I don't think I've got the water brush around, this, this might be this one. These are designed that when you touch, you get all this dampness, all this paint out as a big wet patch. And these are watercolour brushes. But this is watercolouring. This is colouring on a piece of paper. And you cannot allow that water on there. So what you need to do is you want a flat pot or a dish. Scrape some of the water off and then drag it across a, ba a damp baby wipe. Baby wipes are best because they last a few days, they absorb what colour you want and they're really, really good. Now I've actually kept my face wipes, not when I've had makeup on, but if I haven't had any makeup on, I still use a face wipe every night and every day. And they are really nice quality ones, the L'Oreal ones I use. So I've put them from one bag when I've wiped my face to another. Now it does have my face skin on it, um, but it doesn't have any makeup. So basically it's it's clean and it's quite adequate to draw my brush on it. Uh, so I'll be recycling those because baby wipes, it's just a waste I think. But that is to, at the moment a baby wipe. But if you use face wipes, um, as I say, obviously if you're taking makeup off they're going to be filthy but when you use a face wipe morning and night without any makeup 
the, the baby wipe just freshens your face for ready for face cream but the baby the face wipe looks immaculate um, and when my hubby comes back I'll get him to bring one down um, that particular one is a baby wipe but I just thought it would recycle um, the face wipes that normally go in the bin so you want a flare leaf, a top of a dish, a jam jar lid will be adequate. We don't want much water. Um, just twist to a point and that's as much dampness as you need. And that's allowing you to pick up some colour. So the pe pencils are scratched and you get about three layers. But you can use it on an ordinary piece of paper. But the idea is you're not using too much water. So twist to a baby wipe. Now I've decided that I'd like the chocolate and the Derwent watercolour pencils have number 66 is called, it is a, a colour called chocolate. So I've decided that I'm going to put that all the way around the wooden frames. So I could start that first. I've got um, two Artmaster Pearl Series 55s. I've got a number two and a two zero, but my other one's looking a little bit damaged, so I've pulled a number two rigger, a graduate De La Rana rigger, which, as you can see, the tip is not as as long, but it's as wide, so I've got a medium one. I then have the liner ten zero because I love this little one. It's for very tiny spaces and I use it in oils, acrylics and watercolour. And I also use it for um, pastels when I'm blending a pastel. And then I have a, a Pro Art Master Stroke and I think this is a Pro Art number two, a half rigger. Um, they're very similar in edges. Normally I don't use that, but you can use any particular one you like. Again, my two zeros looking, it's splitting at the end there, so it's obviously got, it's obviously seen better days. Um, but I like the riggers, again, but because we haven't got big spaces, we could get away with the half rigger if we really wanted to. But what you don't want, oh, there's a, that's what's happened to one of my, one of mine. It's been pushed back on itself. You could do it with an ordinary thin, um, a thinner brush. Let me find another thinner brush. Um, I've got some sable. This is this is series seven, Winsor Newton sable, uh, and these are really expensive. Um, so if I wanted to do some tiny work, I could do, but I use the rigger because they're two pounds fifty. You've got the same point, and this is for watercolouring when I do professional watercolouring. This is what I use when I'm colouring in a book because you can rub up and down with this one and it will last a lot longer. Oh, hi, Suzanne. Welcome to Bunny's Designs. Anybody else popping in? Oh, he says you've made a, color, a, a travel colour book of watercolours. It's really handy, is this little book. Um, it's quite a few years old now and it's got rather bashed and it was made up of all sorts so I've got some you can use the um, the Winsor Newton student grade uh, Cotman tubes and if you if you sque squeeze a bit out it's about two millimeters thick you can make some nice fat and leave them to dry for, you, for a week that's going to that's almost like a pan. Now I did cut some pans up but I wouldn't recommend it because I nearly lost my fingers twice. Um, so it's very difficult and I must have had a very old set because mine just sliced easy. I spent a hundred pounds on three sets of, of um, watercolours um, in pans and I could only cut two of them so obviously they were newer so because mine were very old and some of these are 20 years old then they will cut easily, but definitely not recommend it. Um, I have the peerless watercolours. Again, they come in strips. They're easy to put into your little book. And the photo album I've used already has the plastic in between. But if you want to cut the plastic, you can then insert another packet. So if this was originally for a photograph, 
I've sliced it the little the little pocket for the photograph. I've cut it round and then I've put another piece of paper in between. So you get twice as many pages. But there is a couple of books on how I've made a couple of videos on how I've made my little book. Um the next ones were the Derwent watercolour pencils and because I've got so many things in there I've labelled mine well, because I originally couldn't remember where things were. So the Derwent watercolours, 72 squares of colour um, but it's given me 10 shades. So even though I've only got 72 squares of Derwent watercolour pencils I've got 720 shades and colours and tones because each square gives me 10 shades at least. So when I'm looking, when I'm working with the pencils, I always have my little book out because I'm looking here. I'm looking here because I know these are all the shades I can get from this particular pencil. Oh, Visa, she has a Derwent graphy tint. Yeah, I've, I've put my graphy tint somewhere else. Um, so that's the Ink Tense pencils. Then I've got the Karen Dash Neos. Uh, and I made bigger squares because I decided that I didn't think this would last long, but it lasts quite a while. So the prototype was smaller squares and these are bigger. So I've got 120 near colours in here. And again, the near colours are gorgeous, but you don't want to take your pencils to the beach. And, and you don't want to take them out where it's sunny um, because they'll melt. Whereas here, I've got all this colour and you can see... I can just catch the light. Sorry about that. You can see the light there. I've got three layers. When you start getting bits, you know you've got too much on and you're wasting it. And if you do get any bits, just get something hard like a rolling pin or something cold and roll it and the bits will roll into the... Um, the page and you're not wasting them so you'll see some of mine and um, if I can find one I think it was the the older set you see this one has got right there you see I, I, I got carried away got some little bits come off but rather than throw them away I rolled them back into the page um, I think, and the brown ones as well were the same if you see these you see these little bits sticking up. That's pure colour. So it didn't go in the bin, it went back in the box. Um, I have my um, my Kuretake Ganzai Tambi watercolours um, and I've, these have been in here about three or four years and I did this because every time I picked the, bo the bo box of um, the pans I dropped them and they were all over the floor. Um, so I made some little puddles um, and I'm glad to see that um, that they've actually copied my idea and they've brought puddles out and they've even called them puddles. So I've got all 36 and I have to say this gold one is fantastic for Bible journaling, doing your lettering. Just can't catch the light, there we go. That gold is the best gold I've ever seen. It's fantastic. Um, then this came as an experiment. These are my watercolour. They are hydrous. Dr. Martin's Hydras, they were drops, um, but they also, because they're so good and well pigmented, they are always remain tacky. But there's tons of colour on there, so I've just left them. There's just tons of colour, um, and I've left that so that that is with me always, because I'd have to carry all the little bottles out with me. And my last experiment, which wasn't brilliant, I put my professional Winsor Newton. Um, made some little squares, puddles, and they always remain tacky. And again, that's because these are professional watercolors, and they have they have a lot of pigment and very little binder. And these are from the tubes. And what you find is they will still be tacky. They're still tacky. Okay, well, you see the pink. They're still tacky, so I had to make a little kind of, um, I use some foam sticky to make like a little well. So they're fine there, as long as nothing touches it, but there again, there's tons and tons of colour in there. And these plastics on this side and this side, when it's finished, it will be 
a palette so I can mix colours. So technically there, I've got every colour under the rainbow there. Um, and at the front, um, as I say, I do have some pans, but you could stick the original pans onto here it's just a bit of glue this particular card here is a watercolor card you can get some little cards they're quite cheap that you can watercolor on postcards um, and I've just stuck it in and it's going to be that little bit stronger but for everything else I found good quality sketchbook paper and um, that's what we've used for the squares and it's called extra wet strength so it's it's quite a good quality, it's not very expensive, a couple of pounds for an A5 um, and then you can cut them down into individual squares which was what I originally did but because this paper has lasted very well, this extra wet sketchbook paper um, I've made bigger squares and I haven't, I've, I've made them, I'm, I cut them individually to start with because I thought they would disintegrate but they haven't so I've made them on big big squares now um, and the plastic stops contamination, you need the plastic behind and it basically is any nice shaped small photo album so the old fashioned photo albums are quite good this particular one is from Paper Chase and I think it was about £2.50 and because I it was a prototype I refolded some extra so my, instead of being, coming out here the case I've used the spine and stuck extra in. In fact, I think I used two. Um, so you can manipulate the things you have to, to fit. Um, I will be doing another video on this because I have the graphite tint to put in um, and I want to put some other things in it as well. Any water-based crayon or pencil, um, but you do need the plastic between. And the plastic will be a palette if you want to mix two colours together. But what you have to then do is make sure that this is dried and cleaned before you put it back. Because if this was wet, it would just activate this colour. So I do find this quite a nice way to work. It's quite a simple way and you can work anywhere. Um, a water brush will do, I've used it with a water brush, but I find for this particular page it's a bit too wet so I'm using these, these rigger brushes. Because these give you the, water, the watercolour effect. So um, I'm going to just go down this section here with the chocolate. And I might use the biggest rigger I think. So this one is the number two, Artmaster Pearl number 55 series. So we dunk it into the brush, twist with the baby wipe. And one thing you've got to remember is don't let your baby wipe touch your pages because it will crinkle them. It has to be away. And then I'm just going to touch. Now I've got a bit of a space here where I've done the, the colour swatch. So I know that when it's where it's missing is going to be pale and when it's in full strength it'll be the full strength. So under here there'll be a bit of a shadow so we can just tease that down and it's very easy on your hands there's no pressure like with markers and things because all the bounds is in this long rigger here it's all in here so your hands never have any forcing at all um, and I find that's a really nice way to work so I've got a watercolour effect there with just a tablespoon of water so we dunk and clean and go again and again I want this to be a bit darker down here so every time you touch your page it will be slightly different but again this is a watercolour so we can take it to almost nothing if you wanted um, a highlight on a tree And because this is a watercolour, I might use a smaller brush actually. I'm going to use the number two rigger in the Art Master Pearl, Della Rowney 
graduate rigger number two. It's a bit shorter because I want to do a little bit of blending here. So if we touch that colour and blend up, we won't have a dark line. Um, don't really want to touch too much because remember this is just watercolour. It's, it's not a watercolour page. It's just ordinary ordinary paper. It's slightly thicker than some others and um, it's not as thin as, as photocopy paper. It's quite good quality but it's almost like thin card so it's not going to take too much water but it does, does manage quite well. So I've done that side. I'm just going to go, um, I'm not going to go across the top, I'm going to go down the side here. You always want to be comfortable especially if you're doing a small area because you want this nice wrist action and if you were doing this, you're tempted to kind of go up and all over the place. So this way you're in full control of that natural curve in your hand. And now I want a little bit of dark under here. So the brush is still damp. I'm going to put the dark there. And dark there. And then work back up into this light area. Just watching for puss. Bungle, what are you doing? Bungle! We have a new member of the family in the art studio. <laughs> and he's uh, he's found his feet, bless him. We've had him a, f a month or so. Yes, I know, he's hungry. Bungle! And you'll have to forgive the... Come on. going to go and have a sleep. Normally he sleeps in his little hammock. <laughs> um, so, oops. so the noise as the bunnies are in the the bunnies are in the room as well so we, we've got quite a quite a lot going on here. So this is wood. Um, sometimes especially this book you've got to have a real good look at things. So this is like a wooden cabinet. He's very vocal, his bungle. So I'm going to do that uh, like a pine colour. So I'm just going to touch this and work across. Now again, I really should have turned the page so that I wouldn't go over. But I have a nice natural watercolour effect um, using, using less. Oh, cuts. <laughs> Oopsie. Bungle. Bungle. Now the bunnies are having a time. I'll just shut this for a second and I'll turn it round and show you. Oops, can't do that. It won't. It won't turn round at the second. He wanted to sleep on that. Um, he's all bitty. He's all bitty. So this is Bungle. This is the baby Bungle. <laughs> There's no baby anymore. This is our Bungle. He was really quick. He's still got his snotty nose, bless him. But he's now a big boy, aren't you? And he's very pretty and very fluffy. Are you going to go to sleep there? <laughs> got the tail in my tea, thank you. You're going to be a good boy. You're going to be a good boy. He's very pretty and he's now <laughs> sitting. Auntie Susie says, hello. You're going to turn round. What's this? He's a bit of a, he's, he likes but sticks. Don't you stand in my water. Yes, he loves, he likes sticks better than toys. He likes pens. He loves pens, don't you, Bungle? I'm going to pop that there and hopefully he's going to have a sleep. 
Sit down, don't go. She just sat on the pen. So, sorry for the cat trail. <laughs> so, I was using the, uh, the, the rigger. No, you don't want to be there, darling. You want to stay there. You can't see it on there. Thank you. I'm going to move the, I'm going to move that because <laughs> it's going to be, it's going to be in the water. I just know he's going to be in the water. We have a bit of a shadow now because there is a, a puss stood there. What are you doing? You have a sleep now. Yes, you're going to sit down. Sit down now. Have a lie down now. You've been playing. So we've got a shoe and a hat. So we want the shoe and the hat to match. So, um, <laughs> he's very clumsy for a cat. I have to say he's extremely clumsy for a cat. Just going to move this canvas out of the way. We may have some more light. there anyway, went to sit over there. Oh, I was trying not to get up, but he's done that. There we go. There we go. You sit on there, play with that. We've got that. Do you want that one? Goodness gracious, it's like having a toddler. <laughs> oh, Suzanne, I'm so pleased your pussycat came home. They do, um... Oh, hi, Kingo, welcome to Bonnie's Designs. Anybody else popping in? Right, where were we? <laughs> I can put that back now. Never work with children and animals. <laughs> so I like the pale softness. So you could do these really bright, vivid colours, but I do like the pale colours. One thing I don't often do is I don't mix. I, when I first did this book, some of the early videos, you'll see me use the Derwent watercolour brown, and then you'll see me go to near colour green, and or you'll see me use um, there's some lovely greens in the. Um, uh, the Ganzai Tammy watercolours. So I use the greens from here, but I might use the reds and the pinks and geranium pinks um, from the peerless to do the roses. So I used to flick and mix everything together, um, but I don't. I tend not to do that now. But um, it's a habit. I've say if I start in the Derwent watercolour pencils, I normally end with that. But there's no reason why you can't mix everything together. Um, if you work in certain ways, you can get very pale, um, very pale from the vibrant colours, and you can get very strong colours from the pale shades. So you don't have to work that way, but I kind of like it. Now there's um, there's a poppy red, which looks quite nice. I think we might have a poppy red shoe, but again, I'm not going for this bright colour here. I'm going for something in the middle. So I'm going to touch this, and they're very, very, very strong these colours. He's being very vocal. So again we've got that natural shadow under there. Let's see if I can zoom in a bit more. Oh I'm so pleased she's home Suzanne. There's nothing worse than having a puss cat disappear. Um, I do, oops, I do have, oh, I know where it is. Oh. Oopsie. <laughs> Bungle's been a terror. Let's see if I can 
zoom in a bit more. Sometimes if you zoom in a bit too much, you lose See if we can get that to be just a bit. I think that's not so bad. That should be better. You might be able to see a bit better. Um, and I, I started this book before I, I got to my rule of, of working, um, of working in so many. Oops. It's just, oops sorry about the noise. That should be better. In my new studio, I don't have. Oops, I only have a concrete floor at the moment. <laughs> so it's... Oops, so I'm not going to paint with my digital pen. <laughs> I use my my uh, dig my digital screen uh, uh, as an extra screen, so it's quite handy. Uh, my Oogie um, 1560, I think it is, 1560. Um, but I will be doing some more digi art, but it's quite handy with the pen. You can just kind of tap things and it keeps the laptop away because of the noise from the fan. <laughs> so we've got a little shoe there. It's not coming up, coming up quite as, as red as I'd want it. Um, but I do like being quite pale. You can get it stronger, but I like paler shades paler colours and then at the top and again you see you find lots of little things there's a little robin sat there so if I pull that forward you can see there is a bit of a sh shadow on there so I'm going to have the hat to match so again it's grayscale you could just draw, draw or paint rather straight over the top and because it's grayscale reacts beautifully. Um, I should have done a contrasting colour. But if you go to the top you get a natural highlight. So I do like this way of working and I can make that pink hat a bit stronger. And I've made a mistake there because that's the that's the bookend, is that it's a, it's a bookend and I've done it pink. Oh, that sounds fantastic, Suzanne. Concrete floor. Well, we will be having um, things down. We will be having um, flooring down. It's just because it has to dry out because it's, it was only finished the week before Christmas um, so I'm looking for my flesh turner, I don't know what I've done with it I'm sure there's a flesh in the Derwents but I might be mistaken, let me have a look I'm sure there's one called flesh um, I'm, I'm in graphic tint at the minute Yes, I do have a flesh turn. I've, I've gone into poppy red, so actually, I wonder why that was stronger. Uh, that's Ink Tense Pencil. <laughs> so there is... Never mind. I've gone to Ink Tense Pencil with that one, but never mind. It doesn't really matter. You can flick and carry on. So number six, uh, number 16 is called Flesh. So I know that I can use this. 
because I found and normally I use the tiny I use the tiny um, what I'll do is I'll just move the camera very slightly back there so I've got the flesh the flesh colour um, there's a tiny hand there and I like to take that stark white off with just that. I've made a boo-boo with that book. That's a book end. And then we have a pen. Uh, that's rotary ink, that. So that pen is actually one of my rotary pens, which I might have in here. Um, so this gentleman, I think, being an illustrator, draws with these pens. So this particular pen is actually there. So it's a maroon colour. So I've got burnt carmine there so um, I can put a bit of that really dark purple down there now again we know that I'm not sure what I'm going to do with that one that's a book I think that's a bobbin I have a bit of pale colour left on there. That's a label. And so I don't always get rid of the colour because I'm a tight Yorkshire lass. So I like to use it around. Now you could look somewhere else and put it somewhere else. There's a cat curled up there. Uh, there's a rose here. So I'm going to use that very pale colour here to colour that pale rose. Because I've got to remember that things on this side are not as strong. So... When I twist the brush, there's nothing on the brush at all. And again, I love that. All that colour is going on the page. It's not going in the water and it's not going on the on the pot. So I really like that. As a tight Yorkshire lass, I do like the fact that I'm not wasting things. Um, so now I need to look at some greens. I've just bent that, but never mind, it'll be fine. Um, oh, I have a I have a Naples yellow number seven, so I'll just get some colour on there, and I think that would look quite nice. So you can tell that you can get the colour on the end, and then manipulate it down, and it's bending. This this brush is kind of really bouncing about, but there's no pressure on your hands. And then if you come back up the other way. Your highlight will be in the middle. So it's dark there and highlight there. And then what you can do is you can go in the this, this side and it will tell you that that book is kind of rounded. So again, I've used all the colour at the end of the rigger and that's the other good thing about riggers is you use the colour and because all this is damp the colour's on at the end so you you carry on till it's very pale so you get some really nice muted colours and then you are not wasting anything so I like um, blue violet 27 and so I'm going to put that one here and then of course you can see that there is a grey scale anyway. So now I'm going to go back in and start at the bottom because we want that to be darker. But because of the the cross hatchings that the artist has already done, we've automatically got that highlight without doing too much. Um, so we have two more books. So I, I kind of flick between blues and greens. Greens are quite nice and, and old-fashioned reds because they're kind of, um, they're old-fashioned books. So we've got Viridian and Mid-Viridian. This is kind of a, an orangey, a grungy orangey tangerine colour. Um, and I've just decided I don't want to do it there. I think I might do the dress that. So move that up a little bit. Um, and again, if we start here, work down, we've got a natural highlight. 
Now eventually this baby wipe will be so damp you don't need to dough into your pot of water. You can just manipulate that down. So the more colour you pick up, the stronger it's going to be. So you can work however you want. I just kind of like picking up a little bit of colour and creating a little bit of shadow at the bottom. And the rigger will just manipulate that around. So it's quite an easy way to work as well. And all the all the strength of um, doing this. You don't need strong hands for this because the bristles are very bouncy. Um, and that's why I created watercolouring for the disabled. So that when you, you, you're doing this for a long time, all the bounce is in the is in the brush, it's in the bristles. It's not with your hand banging against a page. So the brush sits in your hand and just does all the work. So it's quite it's quite good if you want to work for a long time. You not put any strain on your hands, and you're hardly gripping. the paintbrush. It glides across. And the rigger will only release the smallest amount of dampness. So you don't get a whoosh of colour and yet that's dried. The colour seems to be out slightly. Let's see if I can play with the colour. slightly better. So I've got kind of a little bit of highlight and shadow going on. So we've got some curtains. I think that's going to be um, a green. So have a quick look at greens. Now I set my greens out with colours together at one side and blue greens at the other side. And then I think I've got paler greens on the other side kind of like to have my colours in palette order, just makes things a bit easier. And I like, there's a number, ooh, what's that one, 320? Oh, I'm in ink tense now. You can tell you're in ink tense because the Derwents go at 1 to 72, the Derwent watercolour pencils. The other ones are always stronger. So that's, I need my greens on the other side. So I've got cedar green number 49. And that's kind of like an old fashioned book colour. So we can just manipulate that down and then straight away a stronger colour. And I just picked up the wrong colour. Never mind. I touched mineral green but it's fine. I did like the other colour better but We'll have um, again. Sometimes you can flick through the colours, and I think we could have, we could have a red one. But let me have a look. About a blue. I've got a blue. Um, there is a dark green. I don't want to do browns because we've got brown all the way around, and there's lots of wood. So um, 
I think I'll go back to the cedar green 49. So again, quite strong at the top, strong at the bottom. And if you use the bigger rigger, you get the highlight that you want. It goes from that really dark to that really almost nothing. I'm not sure what the rotary numbers are. I think you could do them grey. Do it. Uh, it's a geranium lake colour. It's a bit, it's a bit pale. You can mix colours if you want. Get rid of that because I've made a bit of a boo boo there. But again, it's a watercolour paper. It will crinkle if I ca if I carry on. I'll just take that away. That might be better actually. Um, there's a little book there called Pins. So normally these little shelves that Colin Thompson does, these will all be about um, about clothes. This is all about pins. So there's the, the, the moon and six pants, uh, the merry scarves of Windsor. They're all a play on words, very clever. Um, but they're all to do with sewing. If it's in that particular shelf, so that's quite, it's quite, uh, quite interesting, is that? So again, go back. I've got the curtains to do. Um, could have dark red velvet curtains, couldn't we? I suppose. So, but sometimes you look here and you see a colour that you like. Two greens as it is. So we look. There's a deep iron blue looks quite nice. Yeah, I think I think I kinda like green. I do like green. Burnt orange looks quite nice. Go for burnt orange. Again, that's quite strong down there. But it'll, it'll, it'll come back up again to be not so strong. So it's a big area, but rather than wet the whole area and then risk a, a buckle we do it in sections and of course that works because those pleats in that curtain are all slightly different careful to go around the hand so it's quite a quite an orangey color is that one? just go down that one again just to make sure and then I can actually pick up, because it's a watercolour, I can pick up colour as well. So it'll reactivate, because it's a watercolour. It'll act just as it would normally. I think I might just put a little bit of a, a dark tone on it, though. Slightly darker. And we can have a bit of a shadow coming down here if we want. So I've got something called Sicilian Yellow and it's like a straw colour and I think I'm going to do the labels that colour. Just an off-white. And I always forget the labels so if I do them now. So that just gets rid of that stark white so it looks like you haven't missed them off. So I've just found that there's a little robin sat there, so um, I think I'm just going to put a little bit of that dark, the dark grey blue on there, um, and I might darken this one up as well. 
so that one's finished that corner so it doesn't take long um, and it's a fairly when you look at the whole page it's fairly complicated so I said I wanted pine here there's a little brown rob in there so I think we might just touch the tiniest little bit of scarlet pink nope if it's sherbet lemon I've gone into ink, ink tense pencils I don't want them to be strong so I've come out of there don't want them to be that strong so I want a very tiny touch of vermilion oh I'm, uh, yes vermilion and it's a very tiny space this so I'm not going to use that brush I'm going to get my my 10 zero and now you'll see that this is wet enough to bring that to a point it's quite damp is that so I'm going to put a little bit of bronze oh, I think I like bronze um, a quick look at the browns that's Van Dyke Brown number 55 and just a touch it's going to brown that little bird up and go over that red and it's kind of it's made the little robin look more realistic. Now I've got a bit of brown on here so I may as well use it. But when I touch here you can see that there's no colour. So I'm not wasting anything. Every scrap of colour is going on this page. And I kind of like that because I do have some bright red on there. Uh, so I'll pick something that's got red on it. Um, I think this could be quite quite bright. It's a little pouch. As you can see, that was quite a bright a bright colour. So you can do it either way with this particular. Let's look at this. Uh, this particular page um, you can colour all the way across just normal and you, you'll get your normal highlight um, I think I'm going to use burnt yellow ochre for this wooden mirror And I do like these really pale colours. Now you don't have to do really pale colours. The other thing you can do is you could scratch the pencil onto the page um, like I did in December and take the book with you so it was already scratched all in just ready for you to just take with a brush. And you don't even need the little book if you don't want to. So we have a little person there, so again we want the straw, um, flesh colour, which I think is number 16 in the Derwents, is flesh pink, uh, flesh pink, and do the face, do the hand, I think there was another hand somewhere, there's always a face or a hand, um, and then there's a bit of a, So we're putting some blue jeans on, so we have um, cobalt blue looks quite a nice blue. Again, doing them very pale though, not very strong colours. I can get very strong colours if I put a lot on, but I don't want to. Um, and there's a tiny bit of blue left, just the tiny sort of blue. So just take off that stark white. And we'll put in... I'll put him a red shirt on Geranium Lake. It's my favourite colours. Oops, I've picked up a bit too much colour there. It's a bit too bright, but I'm sure it'll be fine. So I have some Geranium Lake here that I need to get rid of, so I'm just going to look for another space. Oh, there's a bit of a 
jumper there that I've just made. So there's a difference. That's the dark pink and that's the lighter pink. So of course when I touch here now, there's the tiniest little bit come off, that's it. Um, that looks like a postcard. Just trying to think what colour this could be. Could do a bit of carmine and that, a bit of dark, dark colour. And because it's already grayscaled, it's going to be normal. I can just go over it and it's going to be fine. So don't think you've got to do the watercolour effect. You don't. You can just put colour on and put it on evenly and the dark tones will do, do the things. So we've got some more wood there. So, oops, I just touched that. got some more wooden things and we've got a door here so I think we'll have a green door um, sap green and again you, you know if you don't want to do anything you can just do this we'll have a green frame around the door window And we'll have and I've got a little bit of this colour left so I'm just going to touch those labels we need a red brick colour um, well, we've got a red brick so we'll look at the browns and we've got a terracotta a terracotta is quite a nice ready brown so we'll do the bricks a brownie colour so you can see now I need a brown for the the wood um, and I do like the Van Dyke brown, it's a kind of a cold wood colour. And that's a hat box, but this is a wooden drawer, I think. I think we're going to have a bit stronger colour. The same brown, but just a bit darker because it's... And then I have very pale brown here, almost a f pale fawn colour. I've just gone over that postcard to get rid of that. And so the colours are quite pale. Um, so we've got a hat box and um, what we haven't got a, a yellow or an orange in there so we'll go to the front and I think I've got uh, Naples yellow, I kind of like that colour and the hat box And I have a tiny bit of yellow left on there, so I'm going to go put it into that little, just to add a touch of colour. And it gets rid of the stark white. There is a stark white behind everything. I think that is a spirit level, I think. So it would be white. So if I use the chocolate behind, because I'm using number 66 chocolate, went colour. If I put this behind very carefully, I should have used a smaller brush for this. It 
I could leave that white and it's going to make it pop up so now it pops up now and so we go back to here and we've got a couple I'll just do finish this square off and then because it gets quite tedious once you've seen one of these um, there is a video of how I did this um, it's quite a long time ago now one of the first videos that I made So I think we'll go with a green, oh that's a nice one, um, I won't go there though because it's too brown. Oh, it's a bit boring is that because it's got that big orange thing. and. I use these little post-it notes, but they're on that really nice, not too sticky tape, and it tends not to damage your pages. Um, I think I'm going to do this one this colour. Because it's, it's very similar, it's a bit too similar to the other one. Um, and I'll pick a green cedar green I think looks quite nice so we'll have a green so I'm getting away with the same colour brush because so the same size brush because everything's almost the same size but if there was a bigger space I'd need a bigger longer rigger um, so I kind of like this is a nice green I do have a little bit of pink on there, I think I've caught my nails. You will find that if you have red nail varnish and you scratch anything it will go, <laughs> it will come off. So we've got that green um, and then we want kind of a, a Prussian blue, it's not too bright. And I think we're going to have the brush and blue down there. And it's fairly bright, was that actually? But it isn't a bright turquoise colour. So, and again, the shadow of that rose is already done for you. So we're just manipulating a little bit of colour down. And once you've been in a couple of times, that's it. You've got to kind of call it a day because it'll buckle. Oh, thank you, V. Thank you. So we've got uh, two more. That's a butterfly. So I think I'm going to do the butterfly ultramarine, I think. I think that's a little butterfly. So we'll make it a little blue butterfly. And I've got quite a lot of colour on here, so I think... Um, I'm not sure what that is, but we'll use that blue. And I hadn't done the bottom of that dress, so that could do with a bit of red. Apologies about the bunnies. <laughs> Uh, Madakai Mine number 19 it's quite a dark it's a dark red so the books the Victorian books were kind of dark reds and dark greens so you can get away with having that bit of colour on your bookshelf in between there and then I need a nice dark green for those leaves and don't forget the top of the book above the label and some go down the side like that one so we've got 
quite a nice shadow effect there. So it's very pale, this particular page. It's all pale pastel colours and pale. And we do need a touch of vivid green now for these leaves. So I've got a sap green, kind of like that one. Um, and I'm not doing the highlight, This I'm just going to put it straight on because all that work's been done for me, for that grey scale. Of, I think it's almost like into a tree, so it's like a, a woody colour. But I think I've got a dark olive. I have an olive colour there, so I think I'm going to use that one. Number 51 is an olive green. So there's an end of a book, so I have actually a Chinese white silver there, so I'll use that, I think, for the book end. Again, it just takes off that, I've got a bit of bronze there, I'm going to use that for this one. And that's a watering can, I think, also. End of a book, and there's a label. I managed to cover on a coat hanger, and the coat hanger can just have a tiny bit of bronze on it. Just finish off that little label, and I think we've done. Well, I've got one more label left. I think I might just just a touch of of olive. And it's the palest, palest green, but what it's doing is just getting rid of that stark white. So this particular sticky tells me that this page isn't finished. And I did write Dermot Watercolour Pencils, because I do tend to forget. <laughs> I forget what I'm doing. So it takes about, I've missed about a fair bit, but there's some nice colour there. The sun coming round. There is some nice colour and it will match with the other side so it's one complete double page spread. So I shall zoom out and show you what I've done. Oopsie, come on. So it's a really nice way to work and remember now that baby wipe you could almost squeeze you can squeeze water out of it so you never run out of water because if you look at this it's almost the same and the baby wipes almost clean I did have a little tiny touch of yellow there but mainly the baby wipe is clean so that again tight your glass all that color that I've used has gone onto the page. There's nothing in that water at all. And that's how I like to watercolour. Um, watercolouring in the Colin Thompson colour book. Thanks for watching.